some of Apollo's old trophies? Nope, that's Cyrillic, which can only mean one thing. Yeah, that. <laughs> This movie is truly a roller coaster of feelings, but dag nabbit, no one wants to be woken up with a punch. I get it, you're tough, he's gotta be tough, but truthfully, a nice back rub is the way to wake someone up. Gonna go out on a limb here and say even the scars on Ivan's face are telling his story. After losing to Rocky, as we find out in this movie, he was abandoned by everyone. So that scar below his eye is very likely from their fight and it was just never stitched. Florian Montiano is built like a house and every punch he throws <laughs> confirms that. So yeah, Florian Montiano's workout routine. And we're already being, well, maybe not endeared to Victor, but he ain't no villain. You headbutt, you go down. But I'm gonna keep bringing it up, this movie does an excellent job of humanizing the Dragos, especially Victor. The movie opens with him, we see him eating, preparing for a fight, and then obviously being a house. The heavyweight champion of the world. Unless my memory is deceiving me, it isn't, it's only been a week, Donnie was fighting light heavyweight, 175 pounds against Spirino. Meaning he put on almost 40 pounds of muscle to hit 214, which is a fun reveal while he's still robed. Apparently Jordan only added about 20, but still. Both a cute callback and I love that he's learning sign language with her. There's only three steps into that ring. Just three. How does Sly make the most mundane things sound so epic and life altering? I need him to sit behind me while I'm doing my taxes. Now go get your Mustang back. That's a pretty great line in delivery. Shows the utmost confidence in Donnie and a fantastic place to start Donnie's story. Wheeler was the untouchable man in the last movie. Even Donnie knew he'd messed up when Wheeler accepted his challenge. And now he's gonna finish this fight without a scratch. Oh, and by the way, once we do see Donnie without the robe, we realize why he's not a light heavyweight anymore. I mean, I didn't know if I was gonna win. Well, what's that got to do with it? I don't know. These two talking about love. <laughs> it's the blind leading the blind. Not on how to love, but just social norms, I guess. I asked her if she would not mind marrying me very much. I have a dumb way of saying she's my world. Eh, it was sweet by then. It's your first date that you really messed up. You good? Yeah, real good. Even with the entire world on his mind, Donnie is still thinking about and checking on Rocky. R slash wholesome. Will you marry me? Still hungry, babe. This sequence is interesting because it reminds us of one of her struggles and probably a tricky part of their relationship, and it's also a little comedic but tragic at the same time. It all feels very real. It's the type of thing that a sitcom could write an entire episode around. But in real life, you move past it and you get engaged. The parallels with both Rocky's life before Clubber Lane and Apollo's before Ivan are pretty on point. Victor spends the day doing manual labor before a fight. Donnie's just yawning. Knock on his door and say, hey, how you doing? Rocky's still alone, but I have to say he seems to be okay. He's talking through things that really matter and because he knows Adrian so well, he can almost hear the other side of the conversation. This isn't menacing at all, guys. Totally normal good guy stuff. But what's interesting is how Victor is constantly painted. He's just along for the ride. We find out later what his real motives are. You know, human ones, like have a mom. But for now, Ivan is just dragging him along, letting him know what he should be pissed off about. You've been hype ever since you got this, John. I'm sorry, what does he do with his car? JK, JK, I really need to work John into my lexicon. Everything changed that night, like yesterday to me. Even Ivan, who was really just a stand-in for the 80s Red Scare, is now human. Not just fodder for the Stars and Stripes, but a person who lost it all. Or pictures of me. No, there's no pictures of that. Look, I know Drago is kind of a sad character in this one and is attempting to regain his former glory vicariously through his son, but my dude, you killed one of his best friends. No, there are no pictures of you at his restaurant. I wanna be like, oh, come on, that's too much. Even the news media wouldn't show the fight that led to his dad's death during coverage of a challenge that he's obviously going to watch. But yeah, no, th this is right on the money. Cinema wins with the hot takes, news bad. I lose everything, wife. I don't know, man, if your wife left you because you lost a sports match, your relationship might not have been as solid as you imagined. It's good pictures. Compliments. So I'm gonna let you hold it back for me. Yo. <laughs> that yo. This is Creed vs. Drago. And this is the fight he should take, unless he's afraid of history repeating itself. That was a grimy move, bro. Saying, are you afraid you'll die like your dad did playing a sports match against the son of the man who killed your dad in a sports match is beyond grimy, but good for calling him out. It must be Rocky whispering in your ear. Or why don't you keep Rocky's name out your mouth? <laughs> Bianca told you to stop knocking like the police. Stop knocking on my door like the police. And I could have thrown in the towel. I didn't. Like I said in Creed, as much as these movies want to make it about the guy in the corner, referees are not supposed to let people die in the ring. Broke things in me. They ain't never been fixed. His brain. He means his brain. He's got nothing to lose. When a fighter ain't got nothing to lose, he's dangerous. I'm dangerous. Oof. Donnie is dangerous, but in that moment you can feel the inner eight-year-old reaching out to his dad to affirm him. At least you ain't got to worry about throwing in the towel this time. Oof. I don't know, maybe I'm just a little tired from the fight. Or prego shadowing. How far along are you? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> the mother-in-law always knows. You don't need my blessings. Clearly don't have Rockies. Dang, the wife of the best friend always knows too. You're tickling me with that fake beard. <laughs> what? All beards are valid. Disrespect. Exactly. It's a monster boy. Yes, been saying this. I prefer house, but normal body weight pull-ups aren't enough for him. That's a balanced breakfast over there. New compliment just dropped. Again, Florian is just so dang likable as a heel. We're constantly on his side, always feeling it from his shoes. It's an amazing update to the east meets west of Rocky IV, and having Ivan seem stuck back there makes the ending payoff even more affecting. Mr. Ebersteit, big Ebersteit. House. Monster. Monster house. That's a fun shot to have the focus make it seem like he's throwing the medicine ball to himself through the mirror. What would I be afraid of? Heck yeah, make them say it to your face. Just a reminder that Jordan can clearly actually box. His rhythm and speed and precision. Hard to remember he's an actor. Dang, and Michael B. Jordan is six feet tall. <laughs> if looks could punch. Look at this man using his fists to create rather than destroy. Where's my Rocky tenderizing meat movie? Rocky crushes garlic and juices citrus all with the power of a burning heart in the eye of a tiger. Gonna fly now, all while living in America? He has a big advantage with the fans in his corner. Yeah, and that helped Ivan so much, didn't it? Whoa! What you call an icon living? Start a record label, Miss Fish just did it. Well, there was his first mistake. No shade to Jaden, but honestly, Willow would have been a better choice. <laughs> All feels so familiar. Even if you haven't watched Rocky IV recently, like I have, the cadence of the fight is eerily similar. And we can feel it. Drago not moving around the ring, not throwing any punches until he lands a big one that surprises Creed. No thank you. I can do without the first person point of view. The funniest thing about these movies to me is that real boxing is one of the biggest sports in the world. People love it, millions of dollars are exchanged. But when it comes to Rocky movies, it's still not quite enough. No IRL punch has ever landed as hard and loud as that right Donnie just took. And you know that's how it felt and sounded inside his head. I mean, how is this not a time to call the fight? Bad ref or bad sport? You tell me. It's both. That look, this man can box and act. <laughs> I mean, so unlucky, because there's a reason it's illegal for how easy it would be to kill someone with that leverage, but also super lucky for keeping your belts, but still unlucky. Rough, but I also assume he can't stomach watching another loved one die. Or he was just going to book flights. You're still a champ. Looks like it too. Come on now, Lee. Sometimes you gotta get knocked down so you can get back up. Wait, are, are Rocky movies basically one long boxing match? I think we all know that feeling. Maybe you can read this as anger, but I see a broken man feeling an emotional release seeing his dad show up for him. There's anger mixed in, but we can't help but become vulnerable messes when people who are or even were a safe space reach out. I'm sorry. Sly keeps impressing me with the emotion that comes through in these films. Who is this man? <laughs> this piece is called Caught in the Shadow, and yeah, yep, that, that's rough. Part of support and love is knowing what your partner needs, and sometimes that's for you to go back to bed. Listen, be there for him. Take care of him. Their dialogue is also underwater. It's a fun detail for us, but it's also pointing out that Dee knows they're talking about him, and he knows what they're saying. Now Ludwig is hitting us with underwater, which has the motif from his training in the first movie, and I think that's just uncalled for. Here we are just months since your controversial loss to Adonis Creed. How does this win feel? What loss? Even when he's in the process of calling Adonis out, I can't help but see through the bluster with each glance at his father. You know, he's not some stoic bad guy with no emotions. I genuinely almost root for him in this movie. Hey Ludmila, you suck. But Brigitte Nielsen is still commanding a room like she did 30 years ago, and for good reason. I mean, have you seen Red Sonia swing a sword around? At this point, if you've sort of missed the victor is all right stuff, you shouldn't be able to ignore it now. This isn't a man overly concerned with winning or even boxing. He just loves his dad. And because his dad is so broken, neither of them really know how to process that. No but no pressure. These are just the worst people on planet Earth. One of you better redeem yourself by the end. No also, I wasn't sure where else to put this, but I just want to mention that Dolph Lundgren has a fourth degree black belt in karate, a master's in chemical engineering, got a Fulbright to MIT, and dated the Grace Jones. Also, he was He-Man, so like, respect. I mean, how many guys did it take to screw in a light bulb? I'm not joking. Rocky was the king of jokes back in the day, so I don't blame the guy for assuming, and honestly, Rocky would be the guy to have never heard a light bulb joke. These moths, they get caught in the turtle's throat, gotta smack them on the back of the shell, and what do you think they get? 
Go on. Show shot. What were you really fighting for? I was afraid of this. Expectations. Whatever anyone's reasons for doing pretty much anything, fear is always going to be a bad reason, even if you don't have a choice. And this type of fear is especially bad. And your natural style just won't work with a guy that big. You're saying yours was better. I won, didn't I? Again, I just watched Rocky IV, and for the record, Rocky's style was get punched a lot and then knock Drago out in the end. And it broke his brain in the process. Hugging. Jane Creek, two seats, easy to remember. You do know she's gonna be black, right? Oh, that's right, I forgot. What I think I like most is that Rocky genuinely might have forgotten. He's been hit a lot. Aw, Unc really showed up. <laughs> Yo. Best version of congratulations on the baby I've ever heard. It's the waiting, man. The waiting is the worst when it comes to tests, especially your kids and tests. Cause she ain't feeling sorry for herself and you shouldn't either. Dang, Rocky just can't help himself. And sure, Sly has written a bunch of these. He's got a screenplay credit on this. But I absolutely believe that Rocky would have these mind-blowing nuggets of wisdom because he looks at the world differently. Ah, <sighs> new parents. So sweet. So, so stupid. <laughs> Why would you put a just calmed baby down in the pram? Don't do that unless you hate your baby and your partner. I've made my feelings about boxing pretty clear, but I still can't help but love that Amara is the one that gets Donnie to start moving again. Obviously it's not perfect and he still has a lot of work to do, but he left the gym without going inside last time because taking this first step would feel like climbing a mountain. There's so much attached to it and just touching the bag reminded him that he could be in control. And maybe a little out of control, but clearly he needed that. Daddy's <laughs> being a bit. Honesty. You wouldn't be any good to anybody if you didn't do what you love. You wouldn't be able to breathe, right? Yeah, but losing at music doesn't usually mean death. There are exceptions, obviously, celebrity death match, for instance. So rush it is. So an interesting bit of trivia about Rocky IV you might not remember is that after Apollo died in an exhibition, the boxing commission was like, yeah, nah, let's not do this again. And they wanted Rocky to wait two years to defend his belt against Drago. And by going to Russia to fight Drago, he technically gave up the title and the fight wasn't sanctioned. It's obviously sanctioned this time, but there's still no hesitation about going to Russia because it's about more than the belt or money, it's about more than winning. The looks this man gives, he's never quite sure how to feel or what to think. Okay, so this is the first time I've really seen someone do an exercise that might make getting punched in the face a little better. Another fun Rocky IV fact is that Rocky doesn't spar once before he fights Drago. He just does rickshaw rides and yells on mountains. Really starting to see the boxing metaphors come through now. You see, he fell down, so he's gotta get back up. Did we wait till the sequel? We did, we did. Donnie and Rocky training out in the desert, saving the world from some mostly gummy sexy guy. As always, a classic training montage is the fastest way to fight fire with fists. It's amazing that they nailed the training montage in the 80s and nothing has needed to be improved since then. Like, you show the guy struggling with a task, and then you show him not struggling with it, and we eat it up. And bringing back his super triumphant motif from the first movie while Donnie is at peak performance. This man always knows how to celebrate. What were we saying about houses and monsters? Machine. He's a beast of a machine. Donis Creed comes in a 25 to 1 underdog. Goodness, someone with 40k is gonna become a millionaire tonight. I don't know if real boxers do this slow bob thing, but it seems like it would be so useful for getting into the right mindset and focusing. It's gotta be hard to watch the love of your life get beat up, but your kid? That's a solid no for your boy Lee. I'd be in the ring telling Dee to use his words and pushing Vic over the ropes when Donnie wasn't looking. That's good parenting. I would go to war. Bianca singing Donnie in with her own song about going to war while the crowd boos them. It's perfect because it's not about the crowd, it's about them and they're all they need. And Rocky assures everyone this fight will be very different from its predecessor. The captions called this a throbbing beat, and I don't know about all that, but I do know it wouldn't not terrify me to go against it. You know, everyone always mad dogs each other, and I think I would just smile, maybe wink, really throw them off, make them fall in love with me, whisper sweet sonnets in their ear. What are you gonna do, hit a guy who you're falling in love with? I don't think so. I don't think so. You know what you're fighting for. Is it love? Did they hear me? And we're underway. <laughs> I don't know if Sly just can't move like that, but one of the greatest additions to the full heart boxer story has been seeing Donnie bob and weave. Rocky would occasionally move back away from a jab, but even that was rare. And a Bravo a bit surprised as Creed shakes that punch off. It's the next stuff, I'm telling you. Seriously, that's just bananas. How is Jordan this quick? Let's get I can't get enough of Donnie trash talking through literally every fight. You love to see Rocky's training plan come to fruition and work exactly the way he wanted it to. 
<laughs> True love. I'm an evil brother. Look, when I'm playing soccer, I generally can't hear or focus on anything anyone is saying, and something tells me that it's a million times harder in the ring. Did I mention I play soccer? Hey, in case we haven't mentioned it yet, Michael B. Jordan's workout routine is still there. These slow-mo punches are making me feel it. It was Ivan's cut in Rocky IV that really turned the tide for Rocky. Seeing that he was human, for Victor it was like a wake-up call. He'd never gone this long in a fight, period. Mayavo Snowba. A freaking sweep of the leg in 2018? Get out of here, 80s boy. As you like to pay, you can take it, you know why? Because you're dangerous. I'm dangerous. That's right. Am I gonna cry at another movie? Four for four? Great start to this year, y'all. I blame all of you. Yeah, he's dangerous. Don't you forget it next time. And this could be the end of the fight. This feels extra brutal, like they're supposed to just grunt and shake it off or get knocked out. Now I'm back to thinking about how awful this sport is, which, okay, maybe that's the point. Yo. Yo. Yeah, I'd be a little nervous too. What's your name? Greek. What's your name? The Greek! <laughs> I love that it's just the ref making sure he's all there, but little did he know it was the reminder he needed. Yup, yuppers, yuppity doo da yay. The workout routine, the Rocky theme, the Adonis scream. You guys kill me. I wondered if maybe they felt it was time to move on from Rocky's theme, but hot dang it, I'm glad they didn't. Hey, you were the worst human alive, and I hope you fall off a 24 to 36 inch set of stairs. And then get hit by a gigantic, speeding butterfly meanie. You know they've done a good job with the Victor's character building because this feels pretty sad. In this moment, there's a brief question of if Drago is just leaving the arena like Victor's mom, but he's not. He's blowing all our minds and doing the right thing for once and choosing his son over his pride and country. Honest Creed defends his title, defends his name. You know Donnie earned the victory music this time. And the Russian crowd is standing and cheering for the American fighter. Guess you can't hear this guy. It's your time. Graciousness. Love you, Rock. It's especially poignant knowing that Sly didn't return for Creed 3. Both Rocky and Stallone are passing it on to Creed and Michael. You also see why you wanted to fight him, too. He does have a punchable face. How you gonna make me feel my feelings for these two evil commies? How? Stop it. Yo. Why is this hitting so hard? Why does every movie have rough parent stuff? More hugging. Apple. Finally, someone notices his bouncy ball he's had for like 40 years. Dang it, Amar, those are the cutest little hearing aids I've ever seen. Big Nasty What? Yes, coolest ring name ever. I think I've made it pretty clear that my favorite part of this story is Victor Drago. I just didn't expect him to be a nuanced human character, and I definitely didn't expect any redemption for the murderous Russian from my childhood. But ah, dang it, do I love every bit of it. And a large part of that is the chemistry between Dolph and Florian. And dang it, this is four movies in a row with brutal parent kid stuff. The relationship between Ivan and Victor is a real highlight here. And while it takes a backseat to Creed, Bianca, and Rocky, as well as the legacy of the Creed name versus the Drago name, the moment Ivan throws in the towel is pretty amazing. Victor crying and his dad comforting him is one of the best moments in the film, and it goes by super quick, which feels perfect for these two. And I love that there isn't some long-winded, you're my son and I'll always love you speech. It's a dad who's there for his son. It's even more impressive when you learn that Sly picked Florian pretty much out of obscurity. He was a professional boxer and model, but that doesn't guarantee acting chops and Dang, did Sly strike gold with him. Even as he's doing bad things, you constantly feel for him and can very clearly see the parallels between him and Donnie. Both living in the shadows of their fathers, both out to prove something, even if they don't always know what that is. A well-rounded character I hope we get to see more of. And it obviously works all the better having Dolph Lundgren back to continue Ivan Drago's story. I don't really believe Dolph is frail for a second, but he sells the hard years of being kicked out of his country. Not that any boxers really have the easiest retirements, it's not like Rocky is all there. He didn't have to come all this way. By train. <laughs> Three days on a train. But just getting to see Ivan and Rocky back in the ring together was a fun little bit of fan service. And I'm not here to pretend that the entire movie isn't fan service because in the same way that Creed remade Rocky, Creed 2 remakes Rocky 4 in a lot of ways. And I'm excited to see what Jordan can do with Creed 3. I'm just curious how many times we can see the same plots play out. A testament to the heart of these movies is that I'm not sick of them yet. And it's not like reinventing the wheel always goes as planned. Tommy Gunn's mullet can attest but Michael B. Jordan keeps pulling out all the stops for this role. Beyond his physical transformations, there's never a time that I doubt what he's going through. When he tells Rocky he's dangerous, I just wanna give him a hug. And then when he says it later, I wanna back away slowly and see if he needs anything. Ice, a latte, I don't, I, I don't know what, what you guys need for these things. Ibuprofen, probably. 
I love his relationship with Tessa Thompson. Again, I find their struggles relatable and their love real. It still doesn't really touch what he has with Rocky, which makes me nervous about Creed 3, but mostly because I want to see Jordan succeed behind the camera as well as in front. I'm pumped for him. He's on a rocket ship, and I can't wait to keep watching him. So I'm sure next week's movie won't have any rough parent-kid family stuff. Let me just check what it is. Looking through the schedule that I definitely write out by hand with a... A, pen, a pencil marker? Ah, here it is. Fiddlesticks. Well, it's going to be a couple more rough weeks, I guess. But wiser you created a monster, and they call me Wiggenstein.